So this recent paper has got quite a lot of attention and it includes a lot of words you hear a lot in this channel, senolytics and lifespan. So I thought I would read the paper. Plus, I was also lucky to hear Toru Minamino present this data at the Senescence Conference last week, which I unfortunately had to watch from the comfort of my home instead of Osaka. So hello and welcome to the Shiki Science Show, where in this video, I will break down the results and discuss whether we have a vaccine now for ageing. So, senolytics then. These commonly refer to drugs that selectively kill senescent cells. Cells that accumulate in the body with age and through their inflammatory phenotype are thought to also contribute to ageing. However, I think now senolytics are more generally referred to as any strategy that can selectively kill these senescent cells and leave your healthy happy cells happy and healthy. Only last week did I inform you on a recently discovered senolytic, procyanidin C1, found in grapeseed extracts, so another drug-based approach. But another approach that I want to remind you of was this antibody drug conjugate. Here, if you remember, they targeted senescent cells by having antibodies recognise membrane proteins expressed on the membranes of senescent cells. And these antibodies are conjugated to a cytotoxic drug such that when they recognise the membrane protein and are subsequently uptaken by the senescent cell, they cause the senescent cell to die. Now, whilst the membrane marker used in this study may not be the best choice, if more selective proteins can be chosen, it will help to reduce negative and unknown impacts on healthy cells, which would still be targeted by the use of senolytic small molecules like procyanidin C1. So this now brings us on to the recent publication, Senolytic Vaccination Improves Normal and Pathological Age-Related Phenotypes and Increases Lifespan in Prodroid Mice. So how does this strategy work? Well, firstly, they chose a different membrane target. Here they selected GPNMB, a glycoprotein that is upregulated in vascular cells in patients in mice with atherosclerosis. And the expression of GPNMB is correlated with other senescence markers. So the authors first developed antibodies that could recognise the protein GPNMB, and then they could give these to the mice as a vaccine, as the antibodies can activate the immune cells to then kill cells that express the protein GPNMB. So similarly to how vaccines that recognise antigens expressed on cells that come from viruses or bacteria that your immune system can use to kill infected cells, it's just this time the marker is GPNMB, which is expressed on some senescent cells. So how did they test the vaccine? Well, first they fed mice a high-fat diet from four weeks of age, which increases the abundance of GPNMB, which is expressed along with these other senescence markers. Then the mice were vaccinated against GPNMB at eight weeks of age and analysed eight weeks later. And well, it seemed to work. It reduced the signal of GPNMB, along with a reduction of sa beta gal, which is used to mark senescent cells, here you can see an adipose tissue, and to also improve the metabolic profile shown here in the glucose and insulin tolerance test. So you might be thinking, well, how does this compare to other senolytics? Well, you're in luck because the authors also thought that. Again, feeding mice a high fat diet, instead of giving them the vaccine at eight weeks, they gave mice the satinim and quercetin for five consecutive days, at eight weeks and also again at 12 weeks of age. And they did the same thing with another senolytic nephetoclax. In all cases, they saw a reduction in senescent staining and visceral adipose tissue at 16 weeks of age. However, it was only in the vaccinated mice that these beneficial effects were maintained at 24 weeks of age. So the key difference seems to be in permanency. Once you've got immunised with the senolytic vaccine, the body continues to recognise the expression of the senolytic marker, GPNMB. But due to these stronger and more permanent impacts on the organism, I suspect it will take longer to see something like a vaccine developed for humans, as there's potentially the risk for autoimmune diseases, recognising a protein that our body makes. But there is also the argument that you could just keep giving the mice this hit and run strategy with the senolytics at more time points than was tested in this study. So what about longevity? Well, to investigate the vaccine on lifespan, they then vaccinated a progeria mouse model. So here the mice have a mutation such that they age faster. And compared with control, mice vaccinated at 10 weeks of age showed a better survival rate 
albeit it was more significant in the male mice than the female mice. So, all in all, I think this was an interesting study, though I don't think I'd get too excited just yet. There are many other ways to induce senescence, and many other tissues that weren't examined in this study. There doesn't appear to be much talk about translating this to humans yet either, which I'm not really surprised about. I think it's more of a proof of principle, but it demonstrates the variety of strategies that are being developed, so that's pretty cool. So anyway, I hope you've learned something in this quite brief video. Thank you to my Patreon supporters, and thank you for listening.